everybody. Welcome back to Shine Like a Diamond. If you are new here, welcome. Um, my name is Beth or Elizabeth or some people also call me Shine. So whatever you are more comfortable with works for me. Um, this video is going to be really, really short. But I felt like I needed to address it because it's a question that I get regularly. Um, on my lives, on my uh, whipping chats, anything basically that has to do with like me working on something, I constantly am getting this question by new diamond painters. And I remember when I was first, actually, I had been diamond painting a while, but they these had just come out. And I was watching somebody else's live as they were talking about them. And I remember being like feeling really like insecure for saying, hey, what is that? Because I had been diamond painting for a while. Um, and so I thought, you know, with as many people have, that have been asking about them, especially new people, I thought, I'm going to tell you for one, so that you're informed and for two... So that way, if you do go to my shop and you see all these things, you know what they're used for. What is the question that I am talking about? To those of you that have been around with me for a while, I'm sure you are like, what? People don't know what those are. But you have to think about it in their shoes. So what I'm talking about is what is a cover minder, a needle minder, a um, place keeper? Uh, what else have I heard them called? Um, cover keeper, like all sorts of these d different words. Mainly cover minder, though, is the one that's used. That is, so if you cross stitch, a needle minder is very similar to, to a cover minder. It just does a little bit of a different task. So um, for this task, because I do not have my cross stitch um, out right now, it's actually in storage which that'll bring me to another topic later that I will be getting that out because I am going to start cross stitching again because it's been a long, long time. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to use this paper clip instead of a, um, a needle, okay? So if you're cross stitching and you have to get up to go to the bathroom really quickly and you put your, you know, you put your needle down on the table and you go to the bathroom, you come back and you're, Get all, or you get busy and then you come back and sit down and go to start again and you're like, crap, where the heck did my needle go? Well, that is what a needle minder helps with. Now, you can use any needle minders. They don't have to be um, flat, but I do say that for a needle minder, a flat one is the best, I would say. Um, but like I said, you can use other ones. It's just the flat ones, I think, um, would be more convenient. So um, I have a couple different ones here, and I'm just going to show you. So instead, if you need to go use the restroom, go make dinner, whatever, you don't want your needle falling on the floor, getting into the couch, um, or something of that sort. So what you do, you just take your needle and you stick it um down right there and it, because the needle sticks to the magnet then your needle stays in place you don't lose your needle it doesn't fall off so if you can see i'm wiggling my thing all around and i put it back down and my paper clip which would be a needle is still there um i think these are really important i think that um, I really wish they had these when I was a little kid because when I was little, my sister did a lot of cross stitching and one time she decided she, um, well, she always would take her needles and stick them into the couch like that. But one day she misplaced her needle, couldn't find it. And being a fifth grader, didn't really care that she couldn't find it. She just, meh, it'll come to, right? Well, that night, I was playing around on the floor with my Barbies and happened to be, my Barbies were getting married. And I was kneeling, I was on my knees, you know, going like this across the floor when all of a sudden the needle went right in and hit the bone and broke. And um, the needle broke, not my bone. <laughs> but anyways, I ended up having to go to the urgent care because the needle had like broke and bent inside of me, um, inside of my shin. And my sister got in trouble because she of course 
just kind of brushed it under the carpet that she had lost the needle, didn't say anything to anybody. Um, and I found that needle consequently. So I think for a needle binder, I think these are an amazing thing. And like I said, the flat ones I think work best, but you can use other ones. As long as you have a good, decent magnet on your cover binder, you can use pretty much anything you want. Um, I mean, I personally wouldn't want to have like this cute, adorable pineapple and because for one thing, it's not going to stick up there. You're going to have to put it down there. And I think this is just too much room for error. So I would go with something that's definitely flatter. But as far as a, so we're going to move on now to a, what it would be used for in your diamond painting world. Because of course, you're not needing to like stick your tweezers to it. I mean, you could, but you don't, you don't need to, right? So, which actually, if you want to, you could like these nice tweezers, they would magnet to it. But anyways, um... So for a cover minder, cover keeper, whatever you want to call it, um, these more 3D kind of ones, they're, some, they're actually my favorite. But um, they work really good for um, when you're diamond painting. Now, this diamond painting I had done just a little bit different. I used some replacement paper that I have. And I am currently out of it, by the way. I'm so sorry, in my shop. But I am um, expecting a shipment. So as soon as that shipment gets in, I'll let y'all know. Because I know that you guys have been asking um, when it's going to be here. So, But anyways, I used these uh, white replacement papers. Which look like this. I cut them into squares because I'm doing this painting differently. And I'm doing a square a day. So I had cut these out evenly and made them into squares. So when I pull back... When I start to work on this, I take up a whole square. Um, I'm not having to like fold it back, but I still use cover minders. One, because they're fun and they are cute. Um, and two, because then I don't misplace my paper. Rather than setting this down like over here, you know, somewhere and then be like, where did that paper go? I can just move it up right in front, you know, where I was, move it up there and magnet it down. And then I'm not going to misplace the paper. So that way, if I go back, let's say I don't finish this, I want to cover it so that I don't get hair and dirt and dust and all that crap on my painting, especially because I have a cat that likes to try to walk across my desk. It drives me nuts. But, um, so I want to put that cover back on. And so I don't want to lose it. So I use my cover keeper to put it there. Then, let's say I get half of this done. If you have diamonds on your canvas and you try to stick this back down, chances are it's not gonna stick well. Yes, I just dropped a whole tray of diamonds on the floor. <laughs> Darn it. Um, okay, anyways. <laughs> Uh, I moved my canvas a little too much, and I had a tray of diamonds up there, and it's all right. They're just blacks. It's I have so many of them. It's not a big deal. Anyways, moving on. Chances are it's not going to stick wonderfully if you have diamonds already there. So what I do is I put it down, then I take my cover minder, and I put it on there to hold it in place so that way that, pa that place is covered and um, not going to get debris and all that other stuff in it. Sorry, my dog was choking on his own hair, I think. Um, okay, so the other way that these are used, I'm gonna grab my other canvas. So what's your roux here? So this one is my Friends of Maiden that I've been working on. I'm gonna bring you up just a little bit. Um, let me move my gift card here under there. Okay, so for I, I've been working on this one off and on. So when I roll it up and I put it away, I always put a cover minder to keep that paper down. See what I'm saying? So see how it's kind of even now, even with the cover minder, it's kind of not on there as well. I should have put two cover minders on there, but without this cover minder on there, it ain't gonna stay. But I have all of this place that is gonna get stuff in it if I don't put something down. So um, I personally, should have known better and put one here and then one here that way um i don't you know have this the problem that i was just talking about um but let's grab one more here and put it down 
need to do that right now while I'm talking about it. Um, sorry, lost my magnet. Let me figure out which side is the, you know what, that's why. <laughs> that one, these ones come with these grotesque, non-working black magnets. And I hadn't, I haven't changed that one yet. So let me grab one that I do have that's um, better. Okay, I'm gonna use this cupcake right here. And I'm going to put that there. So now my paper is going to stay much better. You could even put one on each corner if you really wanted to. But then as we roll this down, I'm gonna show you, the, this is the, the best part, I think, of a cover minder because when you are working with this plastic cover, um, it moves all over, it's noisy, it's annoying. <laughs> Megan, are you okay? Are you okay, buddy? Sorry. Um, okay, so um, when you're working on it and you pull it back, you don't want it to keep falling over. Let's say, even if, like I've been doing diamond painting and I'll have a fan going. And this was before cover min minders came like on the scene and my paper would just go, oh, it drove me crazy. So now when you pull your paper back from the area you're working on and you put your cover minder there. So we'll put this cute little pineapple here, right here. Now your cover is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to move. It's not going to go into your work. It's not going to, you know, annoy you. It's it's there and it's secure. Now, do you need 10 cover minders? Of course not. But do you see people using 10 of them? Of course, because they're fun. They're cute. They're like, you know, something just different. And I I use a lot as well um, because I think it's just fun. So... That is what a cover minder is. Um, I have, in my Shine Shop designs, I have flat cover minders. Like you saw, the Panda was a flat cover minder. Um, I'm gonna roll this up really quickly, and I'm going to grab my other canvas really quickly. And, uh, okay, so, sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought because I had to pause for a second. Um, okay, so I I use a lot of cover minders, but I'm going to show you a different kind um, or one that is multi-functioning. It helps with the paper, but it's also absolutely wonderful, like wonderful, to um, have on your painting every single time you diamond paint. I guarantee you, if you get one like this, you will use it constantly. Okay, so I'm going to grab my mine here get my magnet oh goodness sakes okay so this is a cute little like tub like a wash basin kind of a thing i use this one or i really like this one too um which is like just a little bucket like that you would use on a farm or or whatever it's just like a cute farm bucket i don't know um and then you have a cover minder that's holding your cover back and you also have something to put your trash in. And I don't know if you're like me, and I used to use like random things, but they would flip upside down, they would go everywhere, they would spill everywhere, it was a nuisance. With this, it's nice and secure. It's not gonna go anywhere until you move it, so all of your trash is in there safe. Um, and you don't have to go far. You don't have to drop it on the floor. You know what I mean? It's just, it's super convenient. Um, and then I also have this one and I love this one so much. Um, I'm not like a humongous Hello Kitty fan. I know, don't shoot me. But, I mean, I like it. It's cute. But I'm not obsessed like I know of quite a few people that are. Sorry, I'm trying to get my magnet off of the side here. Okay, so... This one is a more, it's a 3D one, so it's gonna stand up like this. So when it's on your painting, it kinda looks at you, and it's super fun, super cute. One thing I love about it is it's not just a cover minder, okay? It is also a pen. You can use it for a drill pen. I also have them on my shop where I keep it as a regular writing pen. 
because I don't know I use my acrylics the most but every so often I need to write something down and so I thought how convenient would it be if this was actually a regular pen so you can do it either one you can make this a drill a diamond painting pen or a regular ink pen but then after you take this off you are left with this a second so it is not just a cover reminder it is not just a pen it's also a trash collector so three in one for this one um so that is i hope that explains what a cover reminder is what it does um why they're fun now could you take a two could you go and get two plain magnets and stick them together and have it do the same thing absolutely but what fun is that i mean this is like i feel like it's a craft within a craft i love making them i love using them um they're just so much fun i have them on my shop they range anywhere from like a dollar fifty all the way up to fifteen dollars just depends on you know what you want your budget your style all that good stuff um, currently I am doing a raffle where I'm going to be, um, for every $10 you spend in Shine Shop, you will get one entry to a raffle I will be doing on Saturday, which is going to be doing, you, one person is going to be getting three Diamond Art Club paintings, three of them, valued at a hundred and, about $140-ish. So, Every, let's say you spend $70, you'll get seven entries. If you spend 20, you get two entries. And um, for those of you that a have asked me since then, how I, how like you can prove it, well, you don't have to prove it because it's on my records on Etsy. And when I name the winner, it won't be your YouTube name. It will be the name that is on your um, your Etsy account. So I hope for the people that have asked me that question, I hope that answers your question. So if let's say there's a channel and it's called uh, Funky Diamond Painting. And, but her real name in life is Barbara, Barbara Strand. I don't know. I'm just throwing a name out there. When I call the winner, I would call Barbara Strand because that's what she has on her Etsy account. I wouldn't call her YouTube name unless you message me and say, hey, if I win, could you shout me out with, for my YouTube channel? I will absolutely do that. Not a problem. Um, so that is just kind of showing you the different things that they do, the different things that I have. Um, and I hope that helps answer your question as to what these are. So, with that, as always, don't forget you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. So with that, keep on shining, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't already and would like to subscribe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and the bell icon to be notified when I put up a new video.